Uh, lastly, I want to do a little workshop where we're going to play around with Leo and build something. So we're going to do this in the playground. Hopefully, um, so there's a few people from the ALO team in the chat. Hopefully one of them can chuck the link in there. This is play.leo-lang.org. And oops, this is what it should look like. I'll just give people a minute to open that. Thank you, Fabiano. Are there any questions I should try and answer in this brief interim? Nice. Thank you, Pranav. Uh, we may as well get going here. 55. Uh, okay, so uh, that was the link that, that's been shared. Uh, if you do have a second screen, it'll be really, really useful to use now, where you can have the playground on one screen and this presentation on the other. We're going to build a game of Hangman, and I do assume some programming experience. So if you don't have any programming experience, hopefully you can look around and, and understand some of what's going on. Um, but, you know, this is, is for people who know some. Just a quick general philosophy of what I'm going to be trying to do. A lot of the, the language intros I see, uh, <laughs> they're really rote and straightforward. You know, like here's a, here's a U8 and this is how you use it. And here's a character and a string and this is how you use them. And uh, <laughs> it, like it, if you really want to learn, that's fine. You can use it but it's not as fun. And I think there's better ways to do this. So instead, I want to take a different approach, which is like, we have a general aim. We want to build Hangman and we're going to try and translate Hangman into code in more of a fun way. I, I've wrote, written all the code, but I've broken it down for you and I'll be, I've inserted some questions. So everything will be done for you, but I'll have some small questions that I'll try and see if you can play around with an answer. Uh, hopefully you all know the game of Hangman uh, from being a child. It's pretty straightforward. Somebody um, picks a word and the other person has to try and guess letters of that word. And they have a certain number of guesses. And if they don't guess in time, well, you lose the game. This little guy here who's hiding his eyes is almost being hanged. And that will be game over. But you can see the whole state of the game here. Um, you know, I, I don't want to give away too much stuff. This is one of my questions later. But what data is here that represents the game? Most of this is just front end stuff to make it look nice. The actual game of Hangman is fairly compact. Uh, right, so Hangman and the chain. How is our application going to use the L1? Well, the game is discrete. It's not continuous. You know, this picture is a very specific time uh, that, of the game. We've guessed these letters and these letters have been exposed and this is how many lives you have left. So we can put that into a state and send it to the chain. In the beginning, somebody will pick a word and we're, we, we're gonna want them to commit to the word so they can't change it later. So in our context, we'll have them hash their word and send the hash to the chain, and then we can update the state of the game along the way. Uh, and, you know, why Hangman? Why this game? There's no reason why Hangman necessarily has to happen on chain. It's just more of a fun thing to build with it. But poker and other things would make much more sense. Uh, but of course, they're much more complicated in code, and this is more limited, and we can do in a short period of time. Okay, a quick explore, exploration of how it works. This is our playground, if you can see on my screen. In the top left, we have all the code. This is the main file, and this is where all the main stuff happens. All the gray means it's a comment and doesn't affect the code. And you'll always have a main function. Now, when you run your program, it's the main function that gets run. Now, every time you run a Leo program, you're running the main function. The main function has these two inputs in this example, and the inputs are in the bottom left. This 
this window here contains A and B, and there are our inputs. The main also outputs something, U32, and we just initiate that in the inputs file. Doesn't matter what value you give it, but data type is correct. Then in the top right, we can press run and we will run the program, we'll run the main function. And then we'll have all this stuff happen in the bottom right. So build, build is making the circuit. You remember the constraints we saw earlier? It's defining what all the constraints are, right? It's just defining the constraints. Then, uh, see, look, we got the number of constraints here as well, 4,328. And this is also over here, so you, with the previous count so that you can try and improve your program. Smaller is better. We have setup, which is adding your values to the constraints. If you have x multiplied by x minus 1 equals 0, you, the setup is adding a value to x. Thirdly, we're going to prove, once you've done any constraints, we're going to chuck it into the proof system and create our proof. Then we'll just verify the proof to make sure it's valid. And look, it's valid. Seven second, seven millisecond verification, very, very quick. Okay, so let's move forward. One thing I want to ask you for your, for your own sanity is don't read what you don't need. Now, the hangman game that we wrote for you has over 200 lines of code. And if you try and read every single part, you're just going to confuse yourself and <laughs> waste up brain space that you don't need. For example, this thing here is called a circuit. It's like a struct in Rust. It's got two things. It's got something called X, which is a field element. You know, it's not a U8 or, or anything else, uh, not a character, not a string. It is a, a, it got something called Y, which is also a field element. So it just has two things within it. And then we have an implementation on it. We've got this EC negate. Well, it says point negation and probably links to the current negation. Then if you ask yourself, like, what does the code do in here? Well, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you're just putting in a point and getting minus that point. This detail isn't relevant right now. So don't waste your brain with the space because there's going to be a lot of lines of code. Similarly for point addition, well, EC add, probably elliptic curve add. Well, what about all these lines of code? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You just, this, this function adds points together for you. You know, th this is, this box here, that's half of the code that's in this circuit and you're not gaining anything by reading it. So <laughs> for your insanity, try not to read too much. I'm gonna ask you to go to question one now. If we go to the Leo playground in the top left, you have examples. If we go down to question one, click continue. Uh, here's the code that I just showed you in the, in the presentation. Uh, here's a point, EC negate, EC add. And then I've got question here for you, 111. Uh, I'm asking if you can instantiate a point P and then negate it. And I've initiated some of the code for you. And I'm going to say you can have three minutes and see if you can work out how to do this. If you have additional time, you can instantiate a second point and add the two together. And we're just playing around initially with some of the, some of the things. And like, you know, we, we want to make a point because in the beginning of the game, the person has to commit to their word. When they commit, they have to hash their word and what they get out is a point. So we're just defining the point here. Okay, so just another minute or two to try and finish that. So I can slowly start helping you. Uh, also, where I type the questions, I try to add a bit of uh, stuff that may be helpful for you when trying to solve it. Like if you want to instantiate a point, you want to have this structure. And then I can just help you with this here. To P is going to be a point, and I can define X can be one field, and Y can also be one field. Well, I don't even need to type field here. Okay, and then so I've defined a point P. 
it contains one field and one. You see, I didn't, in X, I wrote one field, but in Y, I just wrote one. I don't have to say one field because the compiler can work out for us that this should be a field. Minus B, oh, I'll get my point P, B, C, underscore the gate. Here we go. Now, if I run this, it, it passes where it wouldn't have done before. And sorry, I forgot to explain this line, this console log, what this is doing, you may have guessed, is gonna be printing out something here. You see, we print out this, the coordinates are one and this long thing. And if you're surprised at the size of this, this is because this is equal to minus one. You remember in part two, where we said that all, all variables are some number between zero and P minus one, well, this is P minus one, which is the same as minus one. Uh, okay, and here's a bit more of the code. So you define a point, uh, we can negate it by doing P dot EC negate. And then if you had time for the second question, you can define another point and add them together, or you can add P to itself. And again, we're making the, the points because we need to hash to a point and that's the part of the game it's doing for us. Uh, next up, we're going to have the hangman game. So a circuit we introduced, right? It's just kind of a struct. It contains a few bits of information. My question to you is what variables, what things should we put in the, in the hangman circuit that will uh, represent the state of the game? I've got a picture here of the game for you, and we can see the entire state of the game within this photo. So I'm asking you, what things do you think we could add to the hangman circuit to represent the state of the game? Because once we have this, then we can send it to chain and when things are on chain, the kind of turn has happened. I've given you a little bit of a start instead of the first thing, which is the commitment. You know, we wanna make sure the person is not changing their word. So the commitment is a point. Oh, sorry, and this is gonna be question two in Examples. Yes, Pranav. That's actually me. Um, oh. Quick, quick uh, question. Can you actually turn off your video because I think then we get a full screen on the recording, and then we'll yes. just be able to see your screen a little bit better. Just your video, yeah. There we go. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so a couple minute minutes to do that. Uh, again, if you open example two, once you start scrolling down, you'll see a lot more code here. We have the whole Peterson hash. But again, I don't want you to worry about it. I've defined it for you. The only thing you need to know is it's, it's something that does the hashing for you. You know, here's the struct called Peterson hash. Make a new one, you can hash stuff. Uh, but primarily you wanna be looking on line 72 and figuring out some of the other details. And again, I give you some hints in the description about what you could use. You know, a character, <clears throat> an array of characters. So for example, we could have revealed Another minute to play around there. Oh, okay, this shouldn't be a semicolon, it should just be a comma. Uh, okay, so one way you could have filled this in, this is, you know, there's a few creative things you can, design choices you have. Uh, this is what I did. So we have the commitment, which is the point. We're gonna have revealed, you see in the picture, we have R, E, T, A, and T, and where those letters are in the word. This is what I have for revealed. You may have been wondering like how many, how, how large this array be. And again, this is one of the quirks of proof systems that you're gonna need to, need to know. The size of this array, 20, it can't be variable. It always has to be the same. It, you may be thinking like, if you look at this game, well, the, the length of this word is always the same, uh, which is true, it doesn't change throughout the game, but we're making a generic handman program and different times you play this game, if this word is 10 letters, another time you might want 11 or nine. 
And we can't have that variability in a circuit, at least not directly. So an easy thing we can do is we can say, well, if all letters, or sorry, if all words we're expecting people to, to try and guess from are at most 20 letters, we can just set this upper bound. If we set the upper bound, we want to add another thing, which is going to be the length of the word. You know, this word has length 10. And so the length of the word ideally is something you're going to put in the hangman struct as well. Um, but right now we can't add it because the word length has to be a constant. You know, it's not mutable. Everything here is mutable. And right now we don't have the functionality to add a constant to a circuit, but we will do in a future release of Leo. Right now, we're just gonna deal with that separately. Another piece is use guesses. In the image, you can see we've guessed A, T, V, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the number of guesses left. In the image, you can see how many items have we added to the gallows and how close is this little guy to dying and you losing the game. And then do you have victory or not? But like the, the victory, it's not necessary. If revealed is equal to the word or if revealed hashes to the point, then you'll know you have victory. So there's some design choices you have here. Uh, in our game, we only gonna allow lowercase English letters. So we want a way to check that letters are valid. And I'm asking you if you can fill in this new code, question 333, in question three on the playground. Uh, so you can have a little look at the function, for example, question three. Scroll down, we get to line 75 with question 333. We see we're in uh, the function called valid car, takes in a letter, outputs a bull. Well, we want it to be true if the, the letter is valid, i.e. if it's in this array. So what could we do here? I'm going to give you a few minutes to see if you can fill that in. And feel free to look around at some of the other bits of code if, if you feel like it. But try and keep in mind the general aim we have here. We're trying to make hangman work and we need to check if a guess or if a letter is valid. Right, so here's an array with all the valid letters. Well, maybe we could look through the array and do some sort of comparison. Uh, I'm kind of having you guess the syntax, but uh, yeah, I find it comes easier that way than than just having it be given in a bit of a boring way. So we could do something like four, I, in, zero, dot, 20, 26 letters in the English alphabet. If C, which is our letter, is equal to double equal sign for the syntax, valid cars, square bracket, I, then what we wanna do is valid car equals true. Now, if I click run, uh, so this, this is the kind of thing you, you would have want to have written this for loop with an if inside it, and we set his valid car to true if uh, the guess letter or the letter is inside the array. So now when I clicked run, I had this come up, and we see here that the results are true and false. So if we scroll down to the main file, we're checking if C is a valid letter, and also if underscore is a valid letter. Well, C is valid, so we get true, that's good, but underscore is not valid, so we get false, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if I silence this code, like we had in the beginning, and click run, we get false and false, but this letter C is valid, so you know this doesn't work, and we managed to make it work. Okay, so we managed to decide if a letter is valid or not, the next part would be uh, to check if the, the word is valid. You know, if someone's trying to do the word that has a hyphen or a star in it, then we don't want that to be a possibility. We're also not allowing capital letters just for uh, the sake of 
making it simple. And how do you check that the word is correct? You just made a function that checks if a letter is correct. So how do you now check for a word? And again, I give you some of some hints in the description to help you. Uh, right, so if, if the word is invalid, what we do to uh, make that clear is we change the commitment to the point zero, zero. If you ever see the state of a hangman game where the commitment is zero, zero, then you'll know that this is you know, invalid. The person has met, done something invalid and we're not gonna allow this game to continue or, or that move to be valid. Just a couple of minutes here. Again, this is gonna be question four. Uh, scroll down, working around here. Well, what can we do for i and zero to word length? But well, I'm going to want to check if it's ever not right. Word length. Uh, so you can look at the inputs to new game here. We got something called word. Well, that's the word that we're guessing. Uh, you got the word length, and we're going to output the new. Uh, the new game, which is going to be a hangman struct. So if word position I doesn't equal, uh, what are we doing here? No. If right, we defined is valid car, so we've got hangman is valid car of word position i not equal to true or is equal to false then we're going to set commitment equal to this point here so this should run maybe i made a mistake somewhere there's valid car what are we doing <laughs> oh, it's just valid car, not is valid car. And we get it to run. Firstly, I just want to point out here in this for loop, which I wrote for you, we do for i and zero dot dot word length. Now, I mentioned earlier that word length was a constant. You can only do a for loop up to uh, a set size. Uh, this is the reason why word length has to be constant. If it was a variable, then this for loop is the size of it's going to depend on the input to the circuit. And this is a problem for proof systems. It's something that's not allowed. So you can only make a for loop with a known length, which means it has to be a constant. Uh, now I filled in this code for you and I clicked run and we see that we get this commitment here. And this is because uh, we're setting up a game with a valid word. The word is aliens, and I filled the rest with underscores because they're not needed, and I set the word length to six. But if I set the word length to seven, then the word technically is aliens underscore, and aliens underscore shouldn't be a valid word, which means we should see a change in what's printed here because this commitment is now normal, but we said the indicator of an invalid word would be that the commitment should be 0 0.00. 0. So now if I run it again, let's see. Okay, look, we get out 0, 0, which is good. Our code works. Okay, well done for giving that a go. Question five, second last question. So we're a fair way into uh, the, the code now. We, we've made a point because we're going to hash to a point and the hash ensures that the person is using the right word. Uh, we've got a valid character function to make sure something's valid. We've got a function new game to set up a game. You know, we just take in the word and check it's valid and initiate it. And then the last function we're going to need is a guest letter function. My only question to you here 
is what should the input to this function be? And what should also be the output? You know, if this is the state of the game in this image here, what things do you have to take in in order to update the state of the game? And what will the output be? Yes, better. Okay, well, you know, we made the hangman circuit, so maybe we want to be taking in uh, a reference to the circuit of hangman that we made. Probably going to need the word, otherwise we can't do a comparison. Going to want the word length. And, well, this is the guest letter function, so probably we're going to want the, the, the letter being guessed, letter car. What do we output? Well, the word's not gonna change. The word length's not gonna change and the letter doesn't really, it changing doesn't really mean anything. So all we need to output is again, another self. Um, and this is what I was hoping you to, to fill in in terms of uh, what, what we could do. But again, there's some creativity you could do here. You could design the game slightly differently to take in different parts of it and move aspects around. But once we fill out this function, we'll have a way to update the state of the game. Now, my last question to you is, if it, we're in the, the guess letter function now, and let's assume somebody has guessed a letter, you know, the letter E, it's a valid letter, <clears throat> Can I pause you real quick? Um, just in the, uh, just a question came up. So why do we set the point to zero, zero in, um, you know, after checking so, that the word length is less than 10, 20, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so the reason here why we'd be setting the point, uh, the hash to, oh, did I write hash? This should be commitment. Uh, the reason why we set this to zero, zero is we're checking if the word is valid. Let, let's start the context. This is the new game function. We're setting up a, word, a, a game of hangman, which means that the person has to have a valid word. You know, they can't do star, star, underscore, hyphen. That's not a word. We don't want to allow anything like that. Specifically, we're only allowing lowercase letters. Now, in this for loop, we go through uh, the length of the word. So probably we're looking at each letter. And when we look at each letter, we check if it's a valid character. If there's a, an invalid character, if this ever evaluates to false, you know, they used an underscore or they used a hash, uh, sorry, a star or anything else, we want to know. And a very simple way to do this is just like have an indicator. And the indicator is if the hash is zero, zero, something invalid happened. Yeah. So, if the word is invalid, the hash is set to zero. Similarly, if the word length is more than 20, well, we set the maximum at 20, so this shouldn't be allowed. This will also make uh, zero, zero hash. So this is just a way for us to prevent uh, dishonest players from acting dishonestly. Moving forward, once we set our game up and we have the guess letter function, if a guess is valid, you know, the guess in the letter E, what do you have to update in the state of the game? I want to see if you can fill in this last part. Question six and give you just five minutes. So a bit more involved. Uh, scroll down. If you go down to line, <laughs> is this the right example? Uh, yeah, line 161, you'll see question six. So the player's chosen word, uh, sorry, a letter. And what variables should we update? Above, you can just see we have the revealed letters here, just called reveal. We have the used guesses, and we have the number of guesses left. What kind of things could we update in this 
if condition. So again, I'm slightly throwing you in in the deep end here, throwing all these, these functions at you, but I just want you to remember what we're trying to achieve. You've got a game of hangman and you know we can represent the state of the game in hangman in, a, in quite a limited way. And there's only two moves really in the game. The first move is initiate the game, choose a word and commit to it. And the only other move is guess a letter. That's all we're trying to achieve. And if you do guess a, uh, a lowercase English alphabet letter, what do we have to update in the state of the game? Well, maybe we will want to know where this letter is in the word. So do this I and zero word. Length. Well, if what are we going here? Letter is equal to word position i. Then maybe we want to add this to the revealed. This thing here. Position i should equal letter. Probably going to want to add this to the used guesses as well. Position 10 minus, and it's the right position in this array. And if you're going to do guesses left, minus equals one to reduce the count. Uh, okay, so I have tried to fill in this code for you. The way I've put it in here. Again, there's some creativity you could do here. I do a for loop with an if condition to see if the guess letter is in the word you're trying to guess. If it ever is in the word, we reveal that thing, that letter in that position of the revealed struct. Similarly, we need to update the use guesses array and we need to take one life away. You could, for example, also update the, the victory ball um, I just did this below separately for no particular reason. Um, but you can, ideally you want to do this in as few constraints as is possible. Okay, and you know, basically now we have all, all the functionality of the game. I think it will make sense here. We, I can show you that this, this works now. If we go to examples, hangman full. Okay, so if I scroll down, uh, before we mm -hmm. go to examples, um, maybe a clarification question for um, mm -hmm. just understanding how we're encoding the game into this uh, this program uh, from David. Mm -hmm. um, so why are we passing in the word as an argument to guess letter, uh, presuming that we actually don't know the word itself? Right. Uh, good question. So we have to think about who's going to be running this code. If you want to reveal where that letter is in the word, uh, uh, the only person who can do this is the person who knows the word. You know, when you play hangman, if you and I play together and I've chosen the word, when you make your guess, you can't reveal it in the word. You have to communicate it to me and then I have to update it. So the context here is that you'll send your guess letter to me. I will make a proof that I updated the game correctly, that if you sent the letter E, that I've actually revealed where E is in the word that I committed to. So the, the person running these functions has to be the person who knows the word. The role of the other player is just to communicate their guess. The role of the proof is to ensure that the players act honestly. Okay, so we are currently in the hangman example in the playground. I have scrolled down to the main function. Uh, I want to point out this thing here called create game. And this is a bool. So if create game is true, then we're, we're setting up the game. We're running a the new function. And if create game is false, then we're guessing a letter. 
And in the in the main sorry in the inputs file here, you'll see that it's false. So this means we're guessing a letter. What's the word? Well, it's the word here, aliens. Uh, got these commitments. Uh, actually, this, these commitments aren't quite right. I'm going to update this. So I'm going to from false to true so that we set up the game. I'm now going to run the code. And currently, we don't have, uh, it's not, we've not finished the, the thing that's going to make and use records for you easily. So right now, I'm just printing everything out here. So now I've set up the game and we have these commitment points. Uh, you know, the reveal thing is empty. And so as use guesses, we have 10 guesses left. I can now copy this across. Control C, replace the things here. I'm going to set this true to false. So they will be guessing a letter. And I'm going to guess the letter E. Now, if I run this, let's say we get out this stuff here. Aliens, and we'll see like the revealed struct here. We now have the letter E revealed in this position. So we've updated the game. We've got the use guesses. We've added the letter E to it. And the number of guesses left has gone down by one to nine. And we don't have a victory yet. I, I can copy this across again. Oops. Do, do. Copy across. Now, if I don't change my current guess, this E, what happens when we run the code? Will it update? You'll see that we haven't added the things to the use guesses and we haven't lost a life. And this is because in the code, we're checking that the guess letter hasn't already been used. So if I change this E to an A, hopefully this will work. I press run. And this is a valid guess, so we update the state of the game. We now have two things in the use guesses, and we have these two revealed things. And this program has made a proof of the new state of the game, and this would be the thing I would send to the chain. And then you, as the person trying to guess the word, you're going to see the state of the game. And, hey, Errol? Uh, yeah? Sorry about that. I think the mic is coming in a little scratchy. OK, this has happened a few times. Let me just Mic. Oh, unavailable. What's going on here? Interesting. Uh, I wonder if I can fix this. It just started, so it wasn't. It wasn't the whole time. Okay. Is that better now? Yep. Okay. Cool. I think so. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, we're almost done. So I was just showing you that this this does indeed work and then trying to go over what we were trying to achieve again. Uh, I set up the state of the game and we can package this and send it off to the chain. Now, if you're guessing letters, you'll see it on chain. You know, I'm going to give you a possibility of viewing it and you'll see the new updated state and that also I acted in good faith and we can continue playing. Yeah. So. Again, like there's no real reason why you have to do hangman on chain. It's just a fun thing to build and helps demonstrate some of the ways that we interact with the chain. And it's easier to generalize from there. If you're interested in building yourself, we have a big grants program. Um, you can try to make another game. Somebody's trying to build werewolf and someone's thinking about building battleships. But you could make poker. You can make any other game that you think uh, could be fun or, or relevant. Then there's also any of the ecosystem ideas, the, the private NFT platform, uh, anything DAO related, verifiable credentials, adding to that, that kind of stuff. Uh, but you're just free to build anything you want. We're really interested in hearing your ideas and working together with you. Other ways to get involved. Uh, we launched Incentivized Testnet, I believe, today. So if you want to mine and, uh, and help, uh, please join in there. We host a weekly ZK Salon where we spend an hour discussing ZK related things, whether it's cryptography or something else happening in the space or just uh, you know anything else. And we try to make these interactive and questions from the audience come along to those. We're also planning some hackathons. And lastly, we're trying to make some ZK Explainer videos. I'm trying to make a video to visually represent what's going on in a rank one constraint system. There's some amazing material out there already, but nothing yet in video format that we're aware of. And this is something we're working on. Uh, thank you very much for coming. 
I hope you learned a few things and I hope you have more questions to share with us. And we look forward to building with you.